الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا وإن الله لمع المحسنين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لو أنكم تتوكلون على الله حتى توكله لرزقكم كما يرزق الطير تغضوا خماصا وتروح بطانا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام My dear respecter Teacher Mufti Abdul Qadr Sahib who have come from so far to all of this beautiful gathering and respected president of our synod Jamiyatul Ulama and the ulama who are present here and my teachers who taught me colleagues all praise to Allah to see this beautiful gathering that I am witnessing which was a dream in our life we saw when we were students in Newcastle Darululun Newcastle huge beautiful graduation ceremony took place it was our dua to Allah one day <coughs> there should be a day in our land we will also see this beauty the moment when I met my Ustaz after so long in my dialogue I told him Maulana Abdul Qadir Sahib fought in Newcastle for more than or close more than 20 years and I told this incident to Maulana one day he told I have fought very long years and Maulana was known all over Alhamdulillah in South Africa and he said I would like to retire but when I see students who have come from Sri Lanka he mentioned my name in the class and others a brother from Canada was in the class was there in Darululum and he said my heart is stopping me and making me to continue teaching. That's it. We made dua, a day should come. He will call Maulana for our graduation in Sri Lanka. And I say today. My dear brothers, we are weak. We are very incapable people. When I wanted to go to study in Africa, there were so many people, they said there are so much of virus sicknesses prevailed in Africa. At that time there was a virus, not in South Africa but outside. There were people who said, why you want to go so far? But it was my beloved father who did not agree because he was fearing whatever as a father because there was no student for studying in South Africa. And I wrote letters to many madaris in Pakistan, India and South Africa. One brother who went in Jama, I couldn't, I was trying to get that brother to invite him today, but I couldn't praise him. 
He gave me the address. All this reward will go to him, inshallah. My dear brothers, it was the letter I wrote to Newcastle Dar Lulum, and I, I, Mona Kasim Sema Rahimahullah, Marhum. He replied me, dear son, which took me to a different level in thought. You are welcome to study in our Darul and we have the medium of English and we will do all necessary arrangements for you to get your visa and come and study. My dear brothers, Alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah we travel. Why I say this to encourage the fathers who are sitting here. And why I mention this, it is not we. Somebody else, me as an individual, a weak. If that Rasul told Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Ta'if, Allahumma inni ashku ilayka bu'fa quwwati wa qillata hilati wa hawani ala nas My dear brothers, we are weak. However, when we when we spent, it was in my final year, there was an ijtima in Rastanburg. After Salatul Maghrib, I was sitting, there was a brother from South Africa who sat next to me and made Salah and he asked me, brother, where are you from? I said, I am from Sri Lanka. That was in my Dawra. I was in the final year. Then he asked me, are you Hadi Faru's son? I was astonished. Today, I just then, then in Jamaat, in Malaysia, my mother and father, so I asked him, I was astonished, I asked him, how do you know that I am this person's son? He said, son, your father came to this land seven years before. He made Salat next to me in Markaz in Johannesburg, Salatul Maghrib. And he tapped my shoulder and he told, Make dua. My son must come here and study him. The moment you told that you are from Sri Lanka, I knew it had to be his son. My dear brother, why I mention this? We are nothing. We are useless. We are, I take, consider myself very incapable. But, there were sincere people behind us who supported us. It was the same manner for my graduation, my beloved parents came. I went to meet Hazrat Maulana Qasim Sema Rahimahullah. My last salam with my father. He told my father, the day this the day this child entered our institution, every day I made dua for him. That he should not leave this place. He did not like the food. And it was too cold for him. But every day I made dua that this child should stay here and qualify. And I see today he is qualified. My dear brothers, the mothers who are listening today, the students who are graduating, remember, there were great personalities who contributed. Many beautiful discussions, Mufti Rizvi Saab, Mufti Abdul Qadir Sahib, and others delivered. I think I should share this information, which is part of the history of this beautiful institution, for people to realize and understand that when people of whichever caliber or level, when they do things for the sake of Allah, Allah will bring the results. Allah will make them to see the results. My dear brothers, 
and mothers who are listening today. Whenever I call Hazrat Maulana Qasim Sayyidina Rahimahullah, he will tell me, when are you starting a madrasa in Sri Lanka? It reached a stage in my heart, I was feeling guilty. Then there was an alim met Mufti Abdul Qadir Sahib, my teacher of Bukhari. Maulana asked what Fazil is doing in Sri Lanka. He said, whatever, maybe Maulana don't remember, but Maulana was very hurt. Maulana Abdullah Khalil was there. Maulana Abdul Qadir Sahib asked what Fazil is doing in Sri Lanka. Because we did not have an environment of teaching. And the guiltiness started building more and more and it was really disturbing. We were helpless, we were weak. And I would like to recall when I returned back to my Sri Lanka, it was Mufti Rizvita. I should mention this today. Maybe nobody knows and we should know who called me one day and he said there is a madrasa called Kulliyatul Madrasatul Ain has started it was in the year 2001 the latter part or the 2002 come I'll take you it was Mufti Rizvitab who took me to Ain and he told you give a talk and Mufti Sahib sat behind maybe Mufti Sahib don't remember and it was the first lesson or the first discussion that I had with a group of students who came at that period for Tarbiya. Since then, I had mashura with my parents and continued supporting and teaching at Madrasatul Ain. My dear brothers, the most beautiful period which gave a lot of encouragement, I met Mona Mu'am who was present and from the other side al Haj Najibuddin who was a close friend of my father and my family and Mufti Rizvi Saab he used to meet time and again in discussing there were a lot of challenges this woman needs so much knowledge why are you teaching knowledge I was confronted at times, you don't have white beard and how can you teach women? Bearing all this, I speak to Mufti Rizvita, I always use him as a shield. Whenever I use his name, so the attack or the disagreement was less. The time continued. It was in the year 2005. I had to visit Darul to visit my teachers and etc. And by that time, we decided as a mashura in the mashura, we will start the alim course in Kulliyatul Ain as a milestone in this country. It was Mona Qasim Sema Rahimahullah who took me, I held his hand, took me to the library. I miss him today took me to the library and showed how the syllabus should be designed for women and what manner it should happen, how it should be taught. I had a list of questions which I wrote all of them with him and it was Mona Qasim Sema Rahimahullah who gave that initial guidance. We came back we said with Mufti Rizvita, we restructured the syllabus according to our country and we made this four year Alima syllabus and it was the year 2005 we started Madrasatul Ain and today I see Alhamdulillah the fifth best is graduating may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use them for his noble deen my dear brothers in Islam it did not stop there. It is very important how senior scholars, senior people 
all the professionals who are senior in age and in time, how they should work with the younger generation who are seeing, who are experiencing things and building one after the other. And when the Alima section was continuing very well, it was Mufti Rizvi Saab again started, it was his plan. When are we starting an English medium, Mother Now, I am under tremendous pressure. Whenever I call Mawana Qasim Sema, he asked me, when are you starting? And when I heard Mufti Abdul Qadir Sahib, which I did not want to call him because he will ask the same thing and I will have no answer to give. My dear brothers, Tia Mufti Saab is saying we should start one. It was Ramadan. <coughs> in, the year, in the year 2006, if I am not mistaken, Mufti Rizvi Saab met my eldest brother and told why help him and make him to start this now the pressure was coming from my family and my second brother, he was going to Kolpiti Mosque, it was Mufti Rizvi Saab in Ihram, who met, who got down from the car, maybe Mufti Saab don't remember today, and he went to him and my brother saying this in this condition, telling to, uh, asking you that we should start, you should start uh, with the team, a boys, uh, all in section, which was still disturbing, which was still uh, carrying the stress, how to do this, it, that we had very few people, scholars, who knew English language, and they are also occupied, and this is, we are taking students, and the parents are trusting us, and leaving them on our, upon our shoulders, this was the disturbance that putting a lot of fear in our hearts and etc. And it was in that Ramadan, myself, al haj Najibuddin and Mufti Rizvi Saab met in the house of al haj Najibuddin and both of them said, let's do this one time, we will work, we will do whatever we can, let's start this and we will support this entire effort. <coughs> My dear brothers, Mufti Rizvi Saab did not stop there. As you know, when Mufti Rizvi Saab wants to achieve, he will be in the same case continuously. One morning, early morning in the, in the same month of Ramadan, I received a message from Mufti Rizvi Saab. That message says, Father, I am standing by the door of Kaaba and it is the time of Tajjud, he said I am in dua that this year we must start a Darululum in the medium of English in Sri Lanka My dear brothers, that's what I told that people have done Ihsan upon us and I called Mona Sema I said, Mona, now you are pressing and my other teachers are not happy. Now we need to do something. He said, go ahead and do. We had few mashura. MashaAllah, Nimal Road Masjid came forward. And they said, they will give the third floor for us to use as a madrasa. My dear brothers, Alhamdulillah. I remember... I went to that place and I told Mawlana Sema, I called him, Rahimahullah. I told Mawlana, I'm going, we are going to start this, please make dua. He said, don't keep the phone, I will make dua and it was outside the masjid, my wife was sitting next in the vehicle and he said, I make dua, you say Ameen. He made dua for more than 15 minutes to start this. That's what we see the result today. My dear brothers and mothers in Islam, 
With this dua, the following day, early morning, Mufti Saab, Mufti Shafiq Jakura was in Sri Lanka at that time for one year period and he took the first lesson and Al Hajj Najibuddin and we had by then already uh, chose the students to join the madrasa. That's how this journey started, subhanAllah. This is the journey that we came so long and we see with great challenge at times it was very difficult students are students public they remain as public and so much of pressure that we have to carry can you do this in this country we had always used the senior ulama as a shield and whenever I met the ulama of Marcus, they are present here today. They said, continue patiently. Don't give up. You be patient and you continue. It will, a time will come, it, things will settle. Alhamdulillah, the period continues. And today, my dear brothers and mothers in Islam, it is people behind curtain did all contribution and support and we see the results today that students are qualified. The lesson for you and me and for the students out there, there will be many needs and requirements in our society. As Mufti Rizvi Saab mentioned, counseling and many aspects, how to portray Islam to other cultures, other religions, the turbulence that we faced the last few months, it was too much for the ulama to carry, but it was Allah who carried us forward. That, my dear brothers in Islam, the modern challenges about Islam, against Islam, about the ulama, against the ulama, were prophesied. Now the challenge remains how the scholars who are graduating, as mentioned, because you are qualifying in the medium of English, there is no Kamal. But if you use that language in the service of being, that's where the greatness will come, that's where the barakat will come. Because the lives of Ambiya and the Sahaba, they used all their skills, all everything, to support and to defend the noble deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers, now this entire incident it's a beautiful lesson for all of us. How can the Ummah, the people of our society, professionals, educated people, affluent, wealthy people, and the ulama, and the and the ulama, how when they work together under a common agenda, they will see the result as our Sahaba saw the result. As of Ambiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam saw the result As of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Before his death in Hajjat al-Wada Allah showed him the result of his efforts Of his sacrifices And I would like to conclude My word by saying Those who have contributed and supported As teachers Sheikh Ismail came from Nigeria And Mawana Ahmad His wife was from South Africa when we spoke to him, he said, okay, he stopped his business or whatever that his livelihood and he came with his family to Sri Lanka and my dear brothers in Islam, many others, more at the initial stage, more Saad and more Mu'al and many others that the present team of teachers, Alhamdulillah, they are complete with the entry of Mufti Jawid, uh, a renowned, Alhamdulillah, a Mufti also graduated from South Africa he came in exactly the time that we were in need of starting the Uratul Hadith. Alhamdulillah, that now, my dear brothers in Islam, that those who have given support, even the admin, there were three, four admins that we had, and those who cleaned the Darulum, may Allah reward all of you all, and our students, those who qualify today, inshallah, when whatever service that they contribute, insha'Allah ta'ala, for the sake of Allah, my dear 
all of you all will definitely be uh, rewarded. And finally, to my beloved students who are graduating today, have trust in Allah. That's why the very first hadith that I mentioned, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَتَّى تَوَكُّلِ That put the complete trust in Allah. And don't ever see what skill you have, you have, what ability that you have. We are nothing. It is Allah who will carry us through this journey and put that trust and do it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will take the work from us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us, take work from us to strengthen his noble and beautiful deen. Jazakumullahu khairan jazakumullahu